eat pasta, you are essentially sending a hormonal message to your body saying, pack on more fat. Well, that's it. We're throwing our pasta out, Peter. All pastas, lasagna, all of it. We're done. All this stuff. You even do the, oh, no. just have it so we can look at it no. so we've built up to clean up our constructors assemblers smelters and foundries stay tuned for refinery and manufacturer best practices right here on runestone gaming's tips and tricks we're cutting it out of our diet we are done with pasta we are done with spaghetti we are done with linguine Fettuccine. Fettuccine doesn't count. It absolutely counts. We're going to eat vegetables. We're going to eat proteins, lean proteins. I'm going to make us chicken and asparagus and spinach. We're going to have a great winter. We're going to lose weight. No more pasta. Just have a bowl of spaghetti. Come on. Welcome to the Longhouse. I'm Runestone Gaming. Yes, pasta is bad. All pasta. Hit them with a the disclaimer. These best practices are not for everyone. There are many different ways to approach this game. I think each individual's approach to both problem solving and creativity is what makes this game so great. As mentioned before, one of the greatest challenges in this game are the machines. Each machine provides us with opportunities to solve unique challenges. This is part three of a three-part episode. In part one and two, I provided you with a nice and compact build where you could see everything moving. Since this is the last part of a three-part episode, we're going to mix it up. I'll be pulling off all the stops and showing you some more advanced building techniques. As such, I'll be covering what some more seasoned pioneers are dealing with, refineries and manufacturers. Let's start with refineries. Refineries are one of the machines from mid-game. What makes refineries stand out from the rest of the machines in the game is the fact that refineries have both input and output for liquids. This problem means you'll have to manage more than a solid product. Refineries are also huge. They take up a ton of space, both in height and in width. So today, I have a nice solution for you. Let's head to the build. Begin by ensuring you have the room to place a series of refineries. For this build, you'll need a three x four space for each dual set of refineries. The reason for the dual set is because by placing them this way, you've ensured that the refineries are matching conveyor wall holes and will also help with future placements of mergers or splitters. We'll be placing these refineries one wall up on a platform, so make sure you have plenty of room vertically. Place walls at the edge of this 4x3 space, making sure to use two single conveyor walls in the center of the four long wall. This will be for the input and the output of the refineries. Now, you will need foundation between the walls. Place one meter inverted ramp foundation between where the conveyor holes lay. Place your refineries input at the edge of the tile with the input facing your direction. Move the refinery towards you two ticks. Place your splitters on the input side, making sure to line up the refinery input and the conveyor wall. Place your mergers on the output side, making sure to line up with the refinery output and the conveyor wall. Place appropriate belts between splitters and mergers and conveyor walls to match product input and output. I'm using Mach 1 belts for the purposes of this video, but you can very well run Mach 5. Place appropriate lifts on each input output, then connect the lifts to the splitters and mergers. Place a pipe wall hole on the top edge of the conveyor wall hole, then use a pipe to connect those pipe holes. Place a pipe junction cross directly onto the pipe, making sure to line up the refinery liquid input output. Then connect each junction cross to the refineries. Depending on your build, you may not need the liquid output, so that part is up to you. This build is now 100% functioning, however, now it's time for aesthetics. Add another series of walls right above the original. There's one side that you can't place walls on. Since this is a modular build, feel free to add as many more sets of refineries than walls in from there. Be careful to make sure your walls are uniform and all facing the same direction. Even I made some mistakes with this video. Add some walkways by first laying a foundation and then a walkway adjacent to it. I prefer it this way. This is kind of up to you about how to put these walkways. 
the last part of this build is power. I like to place a power pole lined with the center of the refinery, as close to the refinery as I can get. Then place a double wall outlet perpendicular to your power. This connection will be where you hook your power up to your whole refinery build. Connect your refineries to the power poles and you're done. As mentioned before, this is a modular build, so feel free to extend this build down a line of refineries that matches the belt and liquid throughput. Now on to manufacturers. Manufacturers are one of the machines from mid late game. What makes manufacturers stand out from the rest of the machines in this game is the fact that manufacturers have four inputs. This problem means you'll have to manage multiple supply chains and belts. Manufacturers are three tiles wide in size, but their height is double that of constructors. So today I have a nice solution for you. Let's get to the build. Begin by ensuring that you have the room to place a single manufacturer. For this build, you'll raise up a one meter foundation for wall heights. At the top, make sure that you have a three by three space. Place the manufacturer on the top of this three by three space, making sure to center the manufacturer between the three tiles. Let's take care of the input. Starting with the bottom left, make a staggered series of double conveyor walls with the center having two stacked double conveyor walls. Now stack four conveyor walls perpendicular to the double walls. Similar to the other parts of this episode, we will then stack splitters matching the single and double wall holes, also making sure to match the input locations of the manufacturer. Then delete unused splitters. Let's take care of the output. First, remove the three one meter foundations adjacent to the output of the manufacturer. Place three regular walls, then place a single conveyor wall right below the manufacturer output. Continue this pattern perpendicular to the output. Stack mergers that align with the output of the machine and the perpendicular walls. Delete the unused mergers. Place appropriate belts between splitters and mergers and conveyor walls to match product input and output. I'm using Mach 1 belts for the purposes of this manufacturer part, but you very well could use Mach 5. Place appropriate lifts on each input and output, then connect the lifts to the splitters and the mergers. This build is now 100% functioning and is now time for the aesthetics. Climb to the top using whatever means, then remove the foundation that is below the manufacturer. Place walkways to replace the foundation. This is kind of up to you how to place these walkways. Remember, this build is modular, so feel free to add more or less as needed. The last part of this build is power. Place three high pillar foundations near the manufacturer output. Place a power pole on top, then connect the pole to the manufacturer.
Well, that wraps up part three of this episode. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks next week. I put a ton of effort into creating these videos, so please leave a comment and subscribe if any of this helped you. It means so much to me that I can help others. Don't forget, I stream on Twitch Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 4 p.m. MST, where I talk about this and many other builds. I hope I get to see you there. Stay safe, cheers, and see you all on the next episode, right here in the Longhouse. No more pasta for you or me. Mm. Okay, it's over, we're done. Mm.